The radius of a single nickel atom is 149 picometers and has a face-centered cubic unit cell. What is the volume of a unit cell? So um, to answer questions like this, we have to bring up a model of what that unit cell looks like. So remember, in a face-centered cubic, we have an atom at each of the corners, and we also have an atom at each of the faces of the cube. And so we cut the corner atoms into eighths. So we have eight eighths. So that's one total atom if we just count the corners. And each of the atoms at the face that is a half. And so I have six atoms that sit on the, the six faces of a cube. And there's half of each of them. So that's three total atoms from the face-centered atoms. So all together here, there are four atoms in this unit cell. And to determine what the volume of the unit cell is, I would have to multiply the length times the width times the height. Right? And then I could calculate the, the, the volume of this shape right here, this cube. So in order to calculate those, I need the height and the length and the width. So um, these, since this is a cube, these are actually all equal. So I might say this is A and this is B and this is C. But for this cube, A equals B equals C. So all of these are the same length. So really all I need to do is calculate one of them. If I know the length, um, if I know the um, length of any of these sides, then I can calculate the volume. So what we are given is that the radius is 149. So the radius, remember, is from the center of something to the edge. Let me use a different color. From the center to the edge. So here's a radius, R. 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 So we know what R is. We've got this radius, 149 picometers. But then we are missing this distance. So the length of A or B or C is going to be 2R plus something. And I don't know what this something is in here. So I need to use some geometry to be able to determine what the length of the side is if I know what R is. So I, do, I can see here is also R. And if this is the center of this atom, then I have R here and R here. And then I have R here. So this is R, and this is R, and this is R, and this is R. Right? The, these are all radii. And since these atoms are touching each other here along the diagonal, then I know the length of this diagonal. It's R times R, or excuse me, R plus R plus R plus R, or 4 times R. So we know uh, I'm going to call this D. And I can call this one C. So remember, because of the Pythagorean theorem, and this will be A plus B equals D, I'm just changing the name of this one so I can use A, B, and C in the Pythagorean theorem here. So remember, the Pythagorean theorem says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I know what c squared is. So if I know what c squared is, then I can calculate what a and b are. So c So the other thing to recognize here is that a and b are actually the same thing, right? So this is really if I wanted to make another change here, I'd say this isn't really b. This is really A, because it's the same. And this isn't really D, it's really A, because they're all the same. They're all the same length, right? So what I really have here is A squared plus A squared equals C squared, because A and B happen to be the same length. So we really have 2A squared equals C squared. So a squared equals c squared over 2. 
and a equals the square root of c squared divided by 2. So I know what c is. Right? c equals 4r. And I know what r is. r is the radius. r equals 149 picometers. So c equals 4 times 149. So C equals 596 picometers. And A equals the square root of C squared divided by 2. So A equals four hundred twenty one point four four picometers. So um, we can check to make sure this is true because I know what the length of C is. And so I know that C squared, 596 squared, And then we have 421.44 squared times 2. So a squared plus b squared equals 355.223. So I did a little bit of rounding there. But you can see that these are pretty close. So we know what a is now. We have the, the length of a. So now we have the length of a. And so to find the volume of this unit cell, I just have to have a times a times a, length times width times height. So 421.44 cubed. So the volume of this unit sphere of this unit cell is 7.48 times 10 to the seventh picometers cubed, cubic picometers. So um, your question in sapling is asking for this. Uh, is asking for this value in meters cubed. So let's convert picometers cubed to meters cubed. All right, so we've got seven. Point four eight times ten to the seventh picometers cubed. Remember to do a unit conversion. I have to put the unit that I want down here, picometers, and the unit that I'm trying to get up here, meters. But in this case, I have picometers cubed. So I can look in my metric units um, and look at my unit prefixes and determine that. There are 10 to the negative 12 meters in one picometer. Because remember, the little p 
means 10 to the minus 12. They're equal to each other. So 1 pm equals 1 10 to the minus 12 m because p equals 10 to the minus 12. So uh, we're getting pretty close now. I've filled in the numbers from the chart. I know what the relationship is between these units, but I still have to deal with this cube. So in order to make cubic picometers out here cancel with picometers down here, they need to be cubic picometers. So I have to cube the values inside the parentheses before I multiply them with the, my measurement here. Alright, so after I plug that in, then my picometers cubed will cancel with picometers cubed, and I'll have meters cubed left. And my calculator says 7.48 times 10 to the negative 29th meters cubed. This is the volume of that unit cell in meters cubed. Okay, we can also answer the question, what is the density of this metal? If we know that the metal is composed of cells that look like this and that they just repeat again and again and again, then we can calculate the density of the metal. And remember, the density is just the mass over the volume. And we already have the volume. So density, we have to figure out the mass, and the volume here is 7.48 times 10 to the negative 29 cubic meters. So what's the mass? If I know the volume of the cell, how would I determine the mass? How much matter is in that cell? Well, we already know because we, we answered that at the beginning of this question. I have 8 eighths, so eight eighths equals one atom, and I have six halves, and six halves equals three atoms. So I have one plus three equals four atoms in this cell. So if I have four atoms in the cell, then the mass is just four times the mass of nickel. These are nickel atoms. So to determine the mass, we know that there's four atoms of nickel. And one atom weighs 58.693 atomic mass units, AMU. So the mass in this unit cell is... 234.772 atomic mass units. Now I have to convert this. Usually um, the density is reported in grams per cubic meter or grams per cubic centimeter maybe. So um, since we already have our volume in gra grams per meter or per cubic meter, um, then let's uh, then we won't worry about um, changing the volume to cubic centimeters. We can leave it as cubic meters. But we need to convert the mass from atomic mass units to grams. So um, there are, I'll give myself some more room here. So we have 234.7 seven seven two amu and in one amu one atomic mass unit is equal to one point six six times ten to the negative twenty four grams so amu and amu will cancel I'll multiply this number by this number
and we get 3.8972 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. So my mass is 3.8972 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. So now I could divide that by the volume, 7.48, negative 29th, and we get that the density equals Five point two one zero times ten to the fifth, nope, to the sixth grams per cubic meter would be the density.